various muscles and ligaments are attached to this steroid process known as the steroid apparatus in few individual this steroid process is enlarged and it compresses the nearby structures which is known as the eagles syndrome correlation of the anatomy with the ENT okay now see there is a one large bony projection at the inferior side of the skull this is known as the mastoid process okay so can you see there is the one opening is located between the steroid process and the mastoid process so what should be the name of this opening that is known as the stylo mastoid and it is very most important why because this stylo mastoid foramen gives exit pathway to the facial nerve so which nerve passes through this stylo mastoid foramen yes facial nerve exit through this foramen facial nerve is entering within the petrous part of temporal bone via the internal acoustic meters then it is coming outside the cranium through this foramen okay so during this course the facial nerve is running inside the bony part petrous part of temporal bone with a very long course so mcq which cranial nerve is having the longest intra course answer is facial nerve okay so after this what are the other foramen can you see this is the one more foramen this is the carotid canal internal carotid artery enters within the cranial cavity through this carotid canal while the vertebral artery enters within the cranial cavity through the foramen magna now this internal carotid artery and the vertebral artery both make a circular anastomosis at the base of the brain which is known as the circle of willis which we will discuss later in the blood supply of the brain okay now this is the one another opening is visible this opening is the external opening outside opening of the jugular foramen which we have already seen in the previous part okay so this is all about the various important foramen at lower side but few less important structure can you see there is the one another foramen is there this is on the posterior side of the condyle yes this structure is indicating the occipital condyle in front of the occipital condyle there is the anterior condylar canal which passes the 12th cranial nerve we have seen but this posterior opening is known as the posterior condylar canal yes not important just for the information now see here there is the one bony elevation this bony elevation is known as the external occipital protuberance which we will discuss later in origin of the trapezius and the line which is extending from this external occipital protuberance on the lateral side that is known as the superior nuchal line yes the medial one third part of this superior nuchal line also gives origin to the trapezius we will discuss in the upper limb part so these are the important bony landmarks for the our first year viva as well as for our various mcq entrance exams now little more discussion about the foramen lacerum actually the foramen lacerum is filled by the cartilage in the adult age no important structure is passing through this foramen lacerum as you can see in this image yes emissary vein is passing through this foramen lacerum yes this foramen lacerum also passes one artery that is known as the ascending branch of ascending pharyngeal artery pharynx is supplied by one artery that is the ascending pharyngeal artery which is the branch from the external carotid artery as we have seen in video of the face part then this ascending pharyngeal artery is giving one branch which is ascending upside within the cranial cavity that's why this branch is known as the ascending branch of ascending pharyngeal artery now see here there is the petrous part of temporal bone petrous part of temporal bone is related with the nerve which are known as the petrosal nerve there are the three important petrosal nerve one is the big nerve large nerve which is superficially located that's why this is known as the greater petrosal nerve because it is superficial in location that's why also known as superficial petrosal nerve also you can say greater superficial petrosal nerve all are same one another nerve is there that is deeply running in the petrous part of temporal bone that's why it is known as the deep petrosal nerve and one more nerve is there which is having the very small course that is the laser petrosal nerve okay 
already we have seen that laser petrosal nerve is passing through the foramen oval and what is the importance we will see later in the parotid gland because it participates in the secretomotor pathway of the parotid gland but what about the greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve yes as you can see in this image the greater petrosal nerve is the branch of the facial nerve which is coming from the turned part of the facial nerve the turned part any turned part is terminated as genu so your mcq at the genu of the facial nerve the greater petrosal nerve is emerging how you can remember g for genu g for greater petrosal nerve or greater superficial petrosal nerve then this greater superficial petrosal nerve is passing through the foramen laserum from the posterior side to the anterior side okay and another nerve deep petrosal nerve yes this deep petrosal nerve is coming from where it is coming from the sympathetic plexus around the internal carotid artery as you can see in this image so the deep petrosal nerve is coming from the sympathetic plexus around the internal carotid artery as you know that these sympathetic fibers are coming from the root of the t1 segment t1 of the spinal cord so root value of this deep petrosal nerve is the t1 now this deep petrosal nerve is also running from posterior to the anterior side of the foramen laserum then this both nerves they are running on the anterior wall of the foramen laserum and on the anterior wall there is one bony canal is located again you can see this image this bony canal is located just above the pterygoid bone that's why this bony canal is known as the pterygoid canal here within this pterygoid canal the greater petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve both are uniting and they are making the vidians nerve yes this vidians nerve is formed within the pterygoid canal that's why this vidians nerve is also known as nerve of pterygoid canal so this is one very important mcq which is always and always asked so this greater superficial petrosal nerve and the deep petrosal nerve they are also passing from posterior to the anterior side of the foramen laserum okay what is the applied part of this vidians nerve we will see in pterygopalatine ganglion part later that this pterygopalatine ganglion which is also known as ganglion of the hay fever or ganglion of the allergy so it participates in the allergy yes the vidians nerve also participates in the allergy so correlate with the ent vasomotor rhinitis allergic rhinitis part that in case of the allergy we are treating the patient with the anti